This is Boxing Tickets NA. We are here at Academy One. It's, it's a Tuesday and you think it's a Friday. The music's blasting like it always is in here. I'm delighted to be joined with Connor Quinn. Connor, I guess obviously it's not too long since we've done our last interview. You obviously have a good poker face about you. Obviously, you hadn't sort of let too much out, but um, obviously, it was just announced on Sunday, this is now Tuesday, that you've signed with Frank Warren. This is sort of I guess it's another building block, it's another foundation, obviously in your goals and your dreams, so this is another step in the right direction for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, the last time we spoke after my last fight, I actually didn't even know about this, it was only two weeks ago, so it just shows how quickly things change. Obviously Mark had known and he had this all planned, but wasn't wanting to distract, to distract me from my last fight, and you know, after that fight I went over and met with Frank Warren and signed a long-term promotional deal, so I'm absolutely delighted. And, this is sort of the start of big time boxing now for me. For, for you in a way, it's probably, you know, it's, it's not obviously discredit Mark or anything in a way, but Mark could probably has taken you as far as he probably could in the small hole circuit, when obviously you dreams of British, Commonwealth, European, world honours. There's only so far you can go on a small hole platform. Some of these opponents of the purses and things like that start to get big. They need big promotional backing as well, so it's probably the perfect time for you, obviously, Ten fights in now, nine, nine wins, one draw. Um, so it's the perfect time for you to obviously to take that next step to go to the likes of Frank Warren, TNT Sports, which obviously you've been involved with, um, obviously in the SSE last year, missing out in the TV card. You obviously now you've had a feel for that sort of in some ways, so you're now ready to get, to get boost on the next level and appear on TV. Yes, 100 percent. You know, um, as you say about Mark there, like the plan always with me and Mark was. Mark's obviously my manager, you know, but thankfully he was promoting his own shows and getting me the fights that I needed to sort of get to this point. But we were under no illusions of what the plan was. The plan was always to get to this sort of amount of fights and this sort of level and then sign a, a TV deal. And, you know, when I came home from Australia and signed with Mark, that was the exact plan that he laid out and he's delivered on everything. So now I just get to sit back, let Mark do all the, the nitty gritty work in the background. Frank Warren's obviously promoting the shows and I'm boxing live on TNT Sports and you've got one of the biggest platforms in the world there, you know, TNT Sports obviously formerly known as BT Sport, you couldn't ask for much better and you know, with Frank Warren obviously all the promoters in the UK right now are doing very well and doing great things and for me it was always sort of Queensbury and Frank Warren that I wanted to be under, you know, I think they have showed recently that they're prepared to invest in the, their younger fighters and their fighters that are on their way up and that's exactly what I want. You know, I want someone there that's going to invest his time and effort into me and build me up properly and make me a household name of boxing and especially here in, in Belfast and in Ireland and bring big shows back to Belfast and I, I can be the guy to headline them. You obviously you become the seventh Irish fighter obviously I know you've seen her post and things like that you become the seventh fighter now under Frank Warren Seems as if there's a big resurgence, obviously, now. We've obviously seen these days where, obviously, a Carl Frampton and stuff like that, you know, involved in the big nights here. It Lewis Crocker, obviously, in the past as well, at the very start. Like, there's seven fighters, so you, you nearly have a card sort of full there straight away. You obviously Anto, yourself, and Christina here in the north, and then you've obviously Stephen Kearns, Owen Lavin, Pierce O'Leary, and Willow Hayden in the south. So, there's a really good mix there. I guess it's sort of it's getting to that stage now where you sort of have to do rock, paper, scissors to see who's going to headline the card. Yeah, certainly. You know, obviously everyone has their own goals and aspirations. And um, here in Belfast, like you say, there's me, Anto, and Christina. Um, obviously, Anto, uh, his next fight is huge—a uh, world title fight with Joe Cordina. Like, if a show was to come to Belfast now, you no, know, th there's no questions. Anto would be headlining for a world title. That's amazing. And then I think I'm the next sort of guy in line after that. You know, obviously you've got all the guys down in the south. They'll be headlining their own shows as well, hopefully. But I think in terms of Belfast boxing is this sort of the crap that we have now is amazing but you know obviously a lot of people are getting to that stage of their career now where they're saying how many more times do you want to put your body through these hard training camps and you know, go out and put it all on the line and I think I'm only coming up I'm only starting I'm here for years and you know I've obviously signed a multi-year deal with Frank Warren so I'm going to be around for a long time and you know, I have no, uh, no problems with sitting back and, and biding my time, but when the time's right, I want to be the guy. I want to be the guy everyone's talking about. You know, the, the, the SSC Arena got 9,000 seats in it. You know, I want to fill 9,000 seat arenas and them seeing 9,000 people, you know, they could be walking down the street the next day or walking through the town and I'll stop and have a chat with every one of them. You know, I, I love boxing in Belfast and 
I love the support that we all get and I genuinely do think that and I know in the, in the near future I can be the guy to, to fill these rooms. You're obviously carrying on a great tradition, obviously, the, of the wee men, as they call them, obviously, here in Belfast, obviously, with Hugh Russell Jr. in the past and Davy Boy McCauley. Like, like, it's a great tradition for you to sort of come through, but, like, are you sort of, even though you've signed with Frank Nervell, you're still sort of having to pinch yourself at this sort of moment's come? Like, I know when Mark laid out the plans and everything else, you're coming back from Australia, you know, are you still, like, they give you eight fights in, in, what, 18 months sort of thing? So... Like, are you still sort of having to pinch yourself at how quickly things are moving for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, do you know, like I say, I only really found out about this just after my fight, about the, the, you know, the deal that was on offer and stuff like that. We flew out to London, they meet Queensbury and Frank Warren, and you know, genuinely, that, that was two weeks ago, so everything does just come around so quick. The fights come around quick, these types of things come around quick, and although I was sort of thinking the time is right now and sort of expecting them to come my way because I know that the work that Mark's doing in the background, whenever it does come you still are sitting there thinking like God this is this is unbelievable, you know, this is what I've always wanted in boxing, the opportunities that I've always dreamt of and now they're sitting here right in front of me and it's just down to me now to put in the performances and get the get the big nights coming and sort of progress myself into that sort of world level fighter that I wanna be. I guess when we sort of very first started during lockdown, we sort of first started doing, you know, our interview. I think we obviously had to do it a couple of times because we ran out of obviously time and Zoom. But but like when you were saying back then, you know, like I'm gonna be a multiple weight world champion. People would have watched that and they went, "There's not one of these guys that says he's gonna be a world champion." That you know, just saying it for the sake of it. But like this is getting you closer to what you want to do. So like everything you've been saying, everything you've been dreaming for years, this is you get another step closer to that. And I know you'll sort of. You'll be modest, sort of, in some ways. That you know, walk before you can sort of run into these bigger sort of levels. But like, you know, you're on the cusp of Commonwealth British European titles already there. So, like, you're already a fully fledged pro in terms of you don't need any development under Frank. You could probably maybe go straight into a title fight. Yes, definitely. And um, you know, like when I was saying these things back then, it wasn't just for the, the fun of saying it. Or like you say, as another one of these guys who's coming out saying these things. Like, I've been mixing up with world champion since before I even turned over pro, you know, in Australia I was sparring with Andrew and Jason Maloney and obviously recently I've been sparring with Sonny Edwards and, you know, like, I know what level I'm at and I know that there's no no doubt in my mind that I'll be at that level when the time is right, but it was just always thinking, are you ever going to have the, the big backing of the big TV companies, of the big promoters to get you them opportunities and that was the only sort of worry that I would have ever had, if any, was... I know I'm good enough to, to become world champion, but we'll have the opportunity, and now nah, it's all there on the plate, ready to go. And realistically, like I says in one of my other interviews, if I don't get to that level and if I don't become world champion, in my opinion, it's, it's my fault because I've got everyone around me pushing me now to that level, and I've got all the opportunities and all the backing that I could ask for. So it's just down to me to go in and put the work in the gym, keep progressing, and like you says, whenever you get to that point, you're a fully fledged pro now. It's going in the title fight straight away, and let's get the ball rolling, let's get there. I guess obviously you have a lot of thanks probably to give to, to probably the legend, the, the three-time TV world champion Carl Frampton, who obviously is a pundit for TNT. He sort of had a conversation, I think Frank would be looking at, who was a talent coming out of Belfast, and I don't think Carl's got to maybe see too much obviously of your fights, maybe other on YouTube and things like that, but I guess Mark's been probably doing to Carl what he's done to Eddie Hearn for years, and text him every fight, let them know everything, but you have a lot of probably thanks to give to Carl whenever you see him, to, for obviously putting your your name into Frank's thoughts and, and ending up to where you are now? Yeah, 100%. You know, um, Mark, like I says, Mark does all the sort of work in the background and then just really lets me know whenever things are sort of ready to go, you know, ready to finalise. And he had mentioned to me then that Card Frampton had been on the Frank Warren and, and George Warren and been letting them know about me for a while now and just sort of putting my name out there and letting them and sort of take notice of me and then obviously look what's materialised of it, it's, it's unbelievable and to have, you know, like the, the legend of Belfast boxing and probably the, the best boxer ever to come out of Northern Ireland, putting your name in the mix and telling the top promoters in the world to, to watch you and look out for you, it can only be great opportunities coming off that and that's exactly what I've got so, you know, like he says, you have to just give thanks for someone in, in his position to be continually giving back and sort of helping the young crop on their way up, you know, it just shows not only a great fighter but a great person too. 
you, you'd obviously you, you'd bite somebody's arm off obviously if you just said you're, you're going to get the support and obviously the coverage and things like Frampton's called like, even though he's retired now you obviously there's books signing there in Waterstones last year and the crowd's sort of booking in advance sort of coming down to see him probably maybe in some ways you'd probably like to have the low key sort of aspect where you can go shop him without getting tortured go for something deep without getting tortured but like he, he's obviously his own whiskey and everything out, like, out now as well I guess the good thing maybe for you is because social media is so big now you can become a bigger name than Carl Frampton and always, I guess, you know, hold it back a wee bit, sort of, let's become a world champion first of all before we start thinking of three and four weights, first of all. Yeah, you know, obviously it just shows what type of person Carl is, that he's still got that following and everyone still loves him, but also it shows how great the Belfast boxing fans are and the, the Northern Ireland boxing fans and the Irish boxing fans, that although Carl's retired, they're still getting behind them, they're still supporting them in every way possible. and. So that's just the way the people are here. They just they love boxing, they love fighting, and they love their own. You know, like it, like it likes of England, you're getting world champions coming through day in day out, and it's just when they retire on to the next, or when they lose on to the next. Which here here in Belfast especially, you don't have that all the time. You've got great talented fighters, but in terms of you know, the the top level world champions bringing the the biggest promoters here, the, the Belfast do the biggest shows. You're not getting it all the time, so when we do get it, we love it and we really get behind it, and it just sort of gives you that wee bit of security as well. That if you do get that sort of following and you get that attraction around yourself, that even the day comes and you hang up the gloves, you've still got opportunities there, and anything you sort of put your mind to, it'll go good as Carl has shown because you know you're a people's person and everyone likes you. You're obviously going to have um, eyes now, obviously in Riyadh and things like that. Obviously, Frank and Queensbury are obviously working with Eddie Hearn and everything else, like. Well, obviously, if they, well, we should have had Fury and, and Uzak there, and obviously it was cancelled. Obviously, Anto and Joe Gordon are fight on. There's uh, Fury and Nagano, obviously, this week. Like, do you start to sort of maybe dream of, obviously, maybe big big nights and stuff out there, I guess? That's where the money's at in boxing at the moment. Obviously, if you want the big fight, that's where that. But you can now start to dream and visualise yourself maybe fighting in Saudi Arabia as well. Yeah, I'd fight anywhere, you know. And like, obviously, Saudi Arabia and I is a huge sort of platform of boxing at the moment. It's... The, the sort of the trend at the moment really isn't it you're seeing all the, the big fight nights going there and all the fighters calling for a fight there so I would love to be part of that you know um, I want to sort of in boxing I want it to continue take me around the world you know I, I don't want to just sort of base myself in one place and, and say I wouldn't fight anywhere else because I would love to fight everywhere around the world and obviously Belfast is your home and you want the big fight nights here, but I want to sort of, I want to see the world too. I want to fight in different places and experience different environments, which I've been doing from the start of my career in Saudi Arabia. Like I said, it's hard at the moment, and I would love to. Yeah. Well, obviously, we know maybe the the five v five coming up. Obviously, with Frank and Eddie, probably in some ways with you being obviously Frank's only flyweight. Obviously, Sonny Edwards is, looks like only only Eddie Hearn's only flyweight. It's probably unrealistic, sort of, to look at that. You sparred him, everything else, but. There's a there's a flyweight flyweight slash super flyweight obviously out there. You share a common connection. Obviously, he's both fought Jimsy Kabrang. I'm going to try and pronounce the name. Um, I think anybody that sort of watches these by now knows what I'm like. So let's see what how this one works out. So um, Sultan Al Naimi. Yeah, Sultan Al Al Naimi. Um, I think that's how how you say his name. I seen that he had boxed uh, the guy that I boxed in my last fight and his last fight and you know he's very highly ranked. I think he, he was in the top fifty in box rag, that's what sort of made me take notice of him. And then I think you know he's, he's a real big name out there in the, the UAE. I think he's their, their main guy at the moment, their sort of poster boy and great fighter and you know like I said, I think he's campaigning in the flyweight and super flyweight and I'm Frank's only flyweight, so I would love to fight him. Why not? You know, uh, go to his home turf and get on one of the big shows and get to beat him up in front of everyone. It would be amazing. It, it's, uh, I guess, you know, it's a sort of one there, probably the 5v5, five five, or probably in some ways, is maybe we know what boxing's like sometimes. This is all planned in advance. I think there's a heavyweight fight, maybe a featherweight fight, and things like that. But I guess it's something to maybe to look forward to the future. I know uh, out there, obviously, um, Turkey, I'm not going to, I'm going to call him Turkey, but obviously I can't pronounce it, the sort of last of these names. Um, but I guess that's sort of maybe one in the future, if they may be looking at an opponent for him. Conor Quinn's with Frank Warren now, you can throw your throw your name in the mix. Definitely, they're looking at an opponent for him, I should be the first name that comes to mind, I'm here, ready to go. You obviously know if I put out some questions, um, as I always like to do sometimes. 
and, and I'm going to say in advance, some of these questions are a bit brutal on you, but after driving you to Dublin on Friday night, you and Potty McCrory in the back of my car tell me to turn left in the motorway. You're a wind-up merchant, so I know that when people's giving you abuse, it's because you deserve it. So um, let me see. Where do we go with the first question? So let me see. So I have. I've took a screenshot. So the first question's in. So ask him how many fights till he fights for a British title. Um, I don't know. You know, obviously, I would love to do it now, but because of the situation of the belts, Jay Harris has just won all three belts there, and I think he's holding out for a big fight now. He wants to go on and win a world title, but until that opportunity comes. He's probably gonna hold on to his titles as he uh, as he should, you know. So I think maybe one or two fights, and as soon as that belt sort of available for me to fight for, I, I would be the first guy in line. I think. What did you make? Did you obviously watch? I know obviously you were out in Orlando when that Jay Harris caught up on the fight happened, but were you sort of surprised, or did you expect that Jay Harris with his experience was going to come through? I sort of thought that's the way it was going to go. You know, I knew Conor Butler was a great fighter as well, and I think the scorecards reflect that. But I thought that Jay Harris was maybe a bit too big for him and maybe a wee bit too experienced for him and obviously it sort of it played out that way but like I say it's Jay Harris now is probably going to want to fight for a world title or one of the major ranking belts to get himself in line for the, for the world title so Conor Butler will obviously come again and you know that's another fight if, if, you know, if I was to get the fight for one of the belts or he had one of the belts you know it's, it would be a good fight between me and him as well. So we have four more questions here, so I'm going to let you pick your choice for the next one. So which one do you want? One, two, three or four? Three. Three. Why do you make Owen O'Neill pay for everything? <laughs> because he has the money to pay for it. So um, maybe if I get a couple of big fights in Saudi Arabia, I'll start taking him for lunch. But as of now, I think he got a, his new car there last year and he's already done 120,000 miles on a taxi. And so... That just shows the money he's making. <laughs> you can tell who that question come from, can you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let me see. So, ask Connor now that he's big time. See, this is, these are, they're getting bad now. Ask Connor now that he's big time with Frank Warren. Will he start start paying his dues for the last 14 years? <laughs> dues is that the Clanner Boxing Club? Clanner Boxing Club. <laughs> Listen, is that Peter Graham? It's Peter Graham. Peter Graham. Peter Graham owes me money. Ask Peter Graham where the money he owes me, and then I'll repay the dues. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's obviously they've a they've a bad bad angle on you here. That obviously you're tight. So we've two two left. So do you want one or two? Two. Why are you as tight as a duck's arse, Connor? <laughs> that's what I don't know. It's just that's just the way I am. You know what I mean? That's brought up that way. You know, save every penny you ever make and. Whenever I hang the gloves up, I'll be doing all right. So the last one we've left, and this is probably the funniest one, so ask him why they lock me in the car. I still have P PTSD of car doors locking. <laughs> Jared Hughes. Jared Hughes. Uh, listen, that was an accident. Me, Jared, and Owen O'Neill went to play a game of snooker after the Conlon Mariaga way in, and Jared was in the back, and me and Owen forgot about him. We went in, closed the doors, and had a couple of games of snooker, and he was locked in the car, so that was just an accident. We apologise for that one. <laughs> You done the same to me on Friday down in <laughs> down in Drogheda. You locked the car doors, and then I think with my electronic brake, you couldn't get the car moving. It sort of, I think my clutch is burnt out as well. So I think you owe me owe me some money for that. Um, I guess probably the only other thing I'd probably maybe have to ask is, like, are you hoping to get out soon? Obviously, I know with everything that's going on in Riyadh at the moment, there's there's not a lot of cards sort of happening in the UK. You obviously are back in here to train and stuff today, as you always do. Like you train even when you don't have fight news. But are you hoping to make your Queensbury debut very soon? Yes, I think the start of the springtime, uh, end of April, start of May, is the date that I've been given. So, you know, that would have been the next sort of date that I wanted to box anyway. So it, it comes perfectly for me. And like I say, as I think it, you know, there's a, a chance it's going to be for some sort of title anyway and get the ball rolling and get myself good ranking with one of the governing bodies and kick on from there. I think you're four or five or something, I think, with the, with the EBU at the minute, obviously, from their last ranking, so it was before your last fight. Like, do you now start to... You obviously haven't boxed at the Ulster Hall yet, have you, as a pro? No. So, but is that sort of maybe the dream scenario, sort of, is Frank Bulgy, obviously, you know, Ulster Hall down the years, we've obviously had Frampton, Burnett, like, Frampton sort of, that was his breakout sort of thing as well, so is that maybe a realistic sort of first venue for you here in Belfast, under Frank? Yeah. Ulster Hall, Waterfront, somewhere like that, maybe... 
get the name sort of building and then obviously down the line you can start looking at the bigger venues but I don't want to wait till then, I don't want to wait till you're able to, to sell out an arena or one of the big sort of stadiums, I want to be given the opportunity to headline my own shows sooner than that and obviously with that it's going to have to be a smaller venue and there are the types of venues that I would love to box them. And, and I just obviously finally, and I know I said finally the last time, just obviously I know you were over in Orlando, um, obviously watching Potties fight. And obviously you were in Dublin last week watching Lee Reese's fight. You seem to support everybody in the gym and I, I think that's probably a, a big thing of, of these obviously stables, you all support each other. Probably it was heartbreaking for us obviously all watching obviously Potty getting beat up, beaten by Berlanga, but there's no discredit and sort of maybe a couple of years time Berlanga's a couple of world titles, probably Potty look back and go, you know, I fought this guy sort of thing, but I'm sure obviously it's, everybody's putting their arm around Potty now and saying, you know what you've done yourself, no discredit. Obviously, it, you know, it was a split second from sort of, it could have been the opposite way if he landed land that upper cup himself. Yeah, you know, um, that's what sort of been saying to people and looking at it, looking back at it, like losing at the highest level of boxing, there's no shame in that whatsoever. And, you know, for Potty to, obviously where he started from, to get to that point, that's unbelievable, it's amazing and for the likes of myself you can only look up to him and you know obviously what an experience, what, a, what an experience he's given everyone around him here the past couple of weeks, everyone in the gym, everyone supporting him and obviously what an experience he's had himself but just to be there and see it all live and you know I wouldn't have missed it for the world and I'm very very glad that I had the opportunity to go over and watch him because obviously Orlando, Florida you know it's not it's not cheap and it's not it's not close to home and thankfully it worked out that I just boxed the week before so I had I had that week that I could go but like I says, you know, everyone everyone in Belfast got behind them and so they should and they should still be behind them and everyone, all the young fighters coming through, that's a guy you should be looking up to and seeing what he's done in his career and how well he's done it and you know he done all that with no no backing of big promoters or big T V channels and just fought his way to the top, knocking everyone out in front of him and you know, I, I hope in the next couple of months he has another couple of big fights and another couple of wins and gets himself back up there because I truly believe that you know he, he, he deserves to be at that level and I think the fight showed that, you know, fighting a guy that had 16 fights, 16 first round knockouts, the chances are that you're going to get clipped, you're going to maybe get hurt in a fight like that just as much as you have a chance of hurting him and, and knocking him out and I just think when, it, when it's that sort of level and that sort of fight, winning and losing doesn't really come into it, it's as long as you carry yourself well and you give everything you've got, you belong there, and he definitely does. Rumours are you're obviously waiting for his cheque to clear so he can take you for lunch. He's another type man in the gym here, so are you waiting for the cheque to clear so he can buy you some lunch? Yeah, you know, when that cheque clears, I think I'm going to be the first guy. going to be at my door beating, get in the car, let's go. We're not lunch, we're going on holiday, we're going to celebrate, we're going, we're going everywhere, we're going around the world. But no, like obviously, listen, that's another thing, you know. Uh, he, he deserves everything he's got. He deserves whatever whatever money he gets in that fight. And you know, him and his family have a bit of time off and get to enjoy themselves for a while because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. You know, and Potty, like I says, he deserves everything. Yeah, well, listen, thanks very much for your time as always, Connor. Obviously, I'm just being cautious of time here because I know your session is going to start. But we'll look forward to obviously getting your your debut fight news, obviously on the Queensbury promotions, and I'm sure we'll catch up with you very soon. Yes, thanks very much. Thank you.